Hello and welcome to episode 5 of the Wi-Fi for Beginners podcast. My name is Nigel Bowden and I'd like to welcome to this series of podcasts where we discuss the fundamentals of wireless LAN networking. In each episode we'll be taking an, a look at different aspects of Wi-Fi networking to help you build your understanding and knowledge of Wi-Fi networks. Uh, there's a set of slides to accompany each of the episodes which will give you a little bit more of an in-depth view of the topics that we discuss which you can refer to later. Uh, you don't need to review these as we discuss the topics during the podcast but uh, it might certainly be good for a reference later on to go back and uh, do a little bit of a deeper dive on some of the concepts. All of the recordings and supporting material uh, and various references and quizzes that I've posted uh, will also be available at our website which is Wi-Fi for beginners com so that's Wi-Fi for beginners all one word dot com uh, go along there and uh, check out all of the resources we've got available there back in episode four we started taking a look at the basics of radio frequency theory this forms a module two of the podcast series it's a very important topic for anybody who wants to learn more about wireless LAN networking a good understanding of uh, basic RF theory is is pretty key actually especially when you come into design wireless LAN networks understanding how radio frequency signals behave so we took a very quick look at a few abbreviations such as RF for radio frequency and we, we talked about different communication systems that use uh, radio frequency communications, talks a little bit about alternating currents and how important they are uh, in generating radio frequency signals. Uh, we talked about the characteristics of alternating current and, and contrasted those with the uh, direct current signals and we talked about uh, how we measure the frequency of an alternating current uh, by measuring the number of cycles back and forth uh, that we get when an alternating current is flowing. And we talked about the fact that when we have an alternating current passing through a conductor, uh, a wire, we have a, a magnetic field surrounding it and an electric field surrounding the wire as well. And these combine to form an electromagnetic field, which when we reach high enough frequencies actually turns into an electromagnetic wave, which will pass through space between the transmitter and receiver and give us the basics of RF communication. We'd previously taken a very quick look at the basic unit of frequency measurement. We talk about one cycle per second and uh, we talked about the theory of alternating current where the polarity of a signal transitions back and forth through positive and negative one time that gives us one cycle and when we have one cycle per second we have a frequency of one hertz uh, hertz is spelt h-e-r-t-z so one cycle per second one hertz and we can add on a number of fairly familiar multipliers to this if you're familiar with kilobits per second megabits per second gigabits per second we use exactly the same multipliers when talking about RF frequencies so 1000 Hertz is 1 kilohertz we've got 1 megahertz which is 1 million Hertz and then we've got 1000 million Hertz is 1 gigahertz so uh, we're, we're progressively increasing in frequency with each of those multipliers by a factor of 1000 and when we're considering Wi-Fi networks we are very much in the gigahertz range we're in the super high frequency range uh, we operate on 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz bands uh, the bands are actually a range of frequencies they, it's not just one particular frequency there's a whole range of frequencies that we use but we tend to uh, refer to them generically as the 2.4 gigahertz band and 5 gigahertz band RF signals demonstrate varying characteristics as their frequency changes things like the distance that they can be received over will change as the frequency changes so we can vary the frequency from very low frequencies down in the few tens of kilohertz uh, in terms of the frequency up to many thousands of millions of hertz which is up in the gigahertz ranges uh, where Wi-Fi networks operate and this whole range of frequencies from very low frequencies uh, down in the uh, low kilohertz ranges right up into the the multi gigahertz ranges um, this is known as the radio frequency spectrum we've got a whole spectrum of frequencies down from the very low end up to very high end and one key characteristic of radio frequency signals is that as the frequency of an RF signal increases the distance over which it can be received uh, will vary in accordance with the frequency being used
For reference purposes, the radio frequency spectrum is divided up into a number of convenient chunks. Uh, down at the low end, we've got the low frequency band, uh, also known as the long wave band. Uh, this varies from about 30 kHz up to 300 kHz. And some of the characteristics of this uh, low end of the band is that the uh, signals tend to travel fairly long distances and tend to hug the surface of the Earth. Um, this is used by uh, a lot of talk stations, you hear of long wave talk stations, and it's quite often used for submarine communications. It's a very useful uh, characteristic uh, to be able to float a submarine to the uh, surface of the sea, uh, and roll out a, a huge long wire antenna and, and send... Uh, submarine communications around the globe to a receiving station so well, that's quite a, a useful application for that a little bit further up in the spectrum we've got the medium frequency band also known as the medium wave band uh, you've probably heard of that in relation to AM radio stations uh, this operates in about 300 to uh, 3000 kilohertz range of the frequency spectrum uh, this tends to cover um, sort of country or statewide uh, geographic areas it depends on very much on the power level uh, that's been applied at the transmitter but as I say you often hear of AM radio stations across a town a city uh, or a state and it's often used for sort of talk radio and uh, lower quality music transmissions uh, if we go a little bit higher in the radio frequency spectrum uh, we're getting into the 3 megahertz up to 30 megahertz range now and this is the short wave band it's uh, also known as HF, high frequency, and short wave band has actually got some interesting properties that you don't find in other areas of the radio frequency spectrum. Uh, it actually interacts with some of the Earth's atmosphere, it's a, it's a layer called the ionosphere, which actually interacts with the signals, and instead of the RF signals travelling straight out into space like they might do for other frequencies, they're actually reflected back down to Earth, uh, and they sort of hop over long distances, which can uh, actually give you global uh, communications depending on the uh, the atmospheric conditions uh, which are present uh, at that particular time uh, and these are used very much by the military uh, some commercial stations uh, but very well known for being used by uh, ham radio operators uh, a little bit higher up in the radio frequency spectrum we get into the VHF the very high frequency range and here we're into the 30 to 300 megahertz range and again you're probably fairly familiar with FM radio stations which are broadcasting slightly higher quality music than you'll find on the AM stations and this band is also used by services such as the emergency services and the distance covered by this is slightly higher frequency again and you find the distance covered is generally more around uh, a neighborhood or just a town or a city it doesn't quite go as far as the lower frequencies again it's very much dependent on the transmit power but for a given level of transmit power the uh, distance covered is far lower than the the lower frequencies we've talked about previously um, slightly higher up again in the radio frequency spectrum we come to the UHF band that's the ultra high frequency band and now we're into the 300 megahertz up to 3000 megahertz so 3000 megahertz is actually getting into the uh, it's the 3 gigahertz uh, spectrum range and the distances that the radio frequency signals will cover at these levels is certainly getting down to much shorter ranges now we're talking certainly in terms of a few hundred feet uh, up to maybe a few tens of miles dependent on the transmit power that's that's used and also when we get to these higher frequencies we're starting to run into difficulties that we didn't experience with the uh, the previous lower frequency bands we actually start running into problems with passing through obstructions these signals don't pass through buildings uh, and other obstructions as well and obstructions start to actually block these signals in, in quite a significant way this particular band is used for services such as TV broadcasts it's used for cellular phones uh, it's used by Bluetooth devices and of course wireless LANs because we're in the 300 megahertz to 3 gig range we're actually right in there on the 2.4 gig range which uh, sits in this UHF frequency range also interestingly in this range we've got devices such as microwave ovens which can also operate in this same frequency range which uh, can be quite problematic to uh, services such as wireless LAN networks and then just above the UHF frequency range we've got the 
super high frequency range SHF which operates in the 3 gigahertz up to 30 gigahertz band and now we're at some very very high frequencies um, distances become very very limited in comparison to the previous bands we've talked about uh, penetration of obstructions um, buildings walls they are all significant issues uh, for radio frequency signals at this particular level uh, typical services which operate in this frequency band are radar systems, uh, you've got satellite TV systems, and of course, uh, if we think about 3 gigahertz to 30 gigahertz, the 5 gigahertz band that we use for wireless LANs sits uh, well within this band, and so obviously uh, we've got wireless LAN services which can be provided in this band as well. OK, so now that we've taken a look at the radio frequency spectrum and we've started to get an understanding whereabouts in the spectrum the uh, wireless LAN frequency bands lie, uh, there's one or two related concepts I just want to run through. We've got three different concepts here. We're going to talk about coverage area, propagation and modulation. And they're all fairly common terms that you hear quite often uh, during conversations uh, around uh, wireless LANs and RF technology generally. So if we start off with the coverage area, hopefully this one's fairly self explanatory um, when we've got a station which is transmitting a signal, the signal can be received at various distances from that station. Uh, the distance covered by the signal is going to vary with things like the frequency. If we think about um, an AM radio station which is going to cover um, uh, quite a few uh, miles, you know, cover a city or a state area, compared to a cell tower which may just cover uh, surrounding few streets, and we've got the AM station down on much lower frequencies than and the UHF frequencies used by the cell tower so that's the frequency dependency and also it depends to a degree on the transmit power as well if we've got um, an RF signal which has been pushed out at a much higher power it's going to cover uh, a much higher area so to give us this strict definition of the coverage area we can consider it to be an area in which receiving stations can successfully receive and understand the signal uh, that they are receiving and the coverage area could be um, uh, many many miles in the, in the case of lower frequency communications uh, but when we start getting up into the higher frequencies covered by wireless lines you can be down to a few tens or a few hundreds of feet even. Another concept you'll hear quite often in relation to radio frequency terminology is that of propagation and uh, if we consider uh, an RF signal that's been transmitted by a station it travels in many directions at the same time and uh, it might be received by uh, a number of stations listening on that particular frequency that's been uh, used by the transmitter and the actual movement of that signal from the transmitter to the receiver is known as the propagation of the signal. You can imagine the electromagnetic wave leaving the uh, RF transmitter and being received by the uh, receiving station. A uh, bit of an analogy, uh, I quite like to have sort of mental pictures of things to imagine how they might work and you can imagine uh, maybe a wave travelling through the ocean, the wave is propagated through the ocean, you've got the, uh, the tides uh, and the winds out at sea that give the sea some energy build up the waves out at sea, you've got huge waves which gradually diminish as they reach the shore and you can imagine the wave travelling through the ocean, that's a propagation uh, and in the same way uh, we get RF signals travelling from the transmitter to a receiving station. Another important concept is that of modulation. We talk about the modulation of an RF signal. An RF signal on its own doesn't actually convey information as such, doesn't convey data, it's not going to uh, convey music, speech, data and video. These are the sorts of things we want to transmit with our RF signals. And to actually uh, convey information using a radio frequency signal, we need to change some characteristic of that radio frequency signal. Uh, and effectively what we do is we piggyback the uh, information, we imprint the data that we want to transfer onto the RF transmitted signal. Uh, the RF signal is uh, said to be a carrier for the information. You'll quite often hear the term uh, carrier wave in um, association with RF theory. And what we actually do is we alter a particular aspect of the RF signal to represent the data that we want to transmit. Uh, as I say, this technique is called modulation and a very simple example will be we will have uh, a radio frequency signal which is being transmitted on one frequency and we may just shift the frequency down slightly to maybe represent a binary zero and then maybe just shift the 
frequency of the signal up very slightly to represent a binary one and by flipping between a slightly lower and a slightly higher frequency this shift in frequency can be used to convey binary ones and zeros and that's a very very simple example where we're just shifting the carry wave up and down by a few hertz to represent binary data. Um, this technique is actually called frequency shift keying and it's, that is a very rudimentary uh, method that we're talking about there. It's only used for conveying fairly low rates of data. There are much more sophisticated techniques uh, which are used to uh, modify other aspects of the signal which can convey much higher data rates and we'll talk about those uh, later on in the series. Well, we're just rolling around to the 15 minute mark in this particular podcast. It's probably a, a good point to uh, call a halt in our discussion of uh, RF basics and uh, we'll continue our discussion of the basics of RF theory in the next episode. Just very quickly, just to recap what we've actually talked about in this particular episode, we started by looking at the basic unit of frequency measurement, which is the Hertz, spelled H-E-R-T-Z, and we looked at the various multipliers that we use in association with that. So one Hertz is one cycle per second, and then we have one kilohertz is a thousand cycles, one megahertz is a million cycles, and one gigahertz is 1,000 million cycles. And we also talked about the fact that we operate Wi-Fi networks in the gigahertz ranges. Uh, we also then spoke briefly about the properties of RF signals, and they change uh, as the frequency of a signal changes. Uh, generally, we find that as frequency rises, then the distance covered by a radio frequency signal tends to uh, diminish. Uh, we then took a little bit of time looking at the RF spectrum, the radio frequency spectrum, and we looked at the different bands that the RF spectrum is divided up into, uh, bands such as the low frequency, medium frequency, the high frequency band, also known as shortwave, uh, VHF band, very high frequency, the UHF band, which is ultra high frequency, and SHF, which is super high frequencies. We then took a very brief look at three very important concepts. We looked at at coverage areas, we looked at propagation, and we looked at modulation of RF signals. Well, that's pretty much it for this episode. Don't forget to get along to the website, which is uh, wififorbeginners.com, where you can find all of the supporting material for this episode and previous episodes. You can find the audio files, the presentations, and the quizzes that I've put together uh, to accompany the series. You can also find some other very useful resources for your studies with wireless LAN networking. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and found it useful, and we'll be continuing our discussion discussion of radio frequency theory in the next episode of the Wi-Fi for Beginners podcast.